Hello and welcome again to the Writer Review. This is Eric Karat Writer, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2001 romantic comedy drama from India titled Monsoon Wedding. I thought, you know, since the month of April is a time where weddings seem to be very prominent during this time of year, I thought maybe we should do a wedding-themed movie, since weddings seem to be very, very synonymous with most of the time weddings take place during the months of April and May. And there's a reason, obviously, f why weddings take place in April and May. is because by the time you get to around June, the weather gets too hot. And then, of course, you know, same with July and August. By September, you know, people are back in school. Kids are back in school and work and everything else. And, you know, the weather starts to get colder. So, you know, you don't want to do it then. So April and May are always, you know, the best times to get married. Because the weather is not too warm. But at the same time, it's not too cold. It's like right there in the middle. The runtime of this movie is 1 hour and 53 minutes long. It is directed by Academy Award winning director Mira Nair. It is produced by Mira Nair and Caroline Barron. The script was written by Sabrina Dewan. It is composed by Mekiel Me Dana. The cinematography by Declan Quinn, and it was edited by Allison C. Johnson. And the stars of the movie, if I butchered any of these people's names, I apologize. So don't take offense to what I'm saying. Or don't take offense if I butchered a person's name. If I did, I apologize, okay? All right. I think I'll do fine. All right, it stars Nezaruddin Shah, Lalette Dubey, Shafali Shah, Vasundara Das, Vijay Raz, Dara Singh, Tilotama Shomi, Parvin Dabas, Kobush Kobushan Karbanda, Kamini Kahana, Rajit Kapoor, Randy Puda, Niha Dubey, Isha Nair, Roshan Seth, Sony Razdan, Jazz Aurora, Natasha Rostoji, Ram Kapoor, Debyandu Bhattacharya, and Rajiv Gupta. Okay. I didn't do it too badly in pronouncing the names. I mean, okay, not everybody has names as easy as John Smith or Jane Jones. But, you know, I think I put in an effort in the names. Uh, let's, get to, let's get to the movie, okay? This is why we do movie reviews. While the new millennium was still in its infancy, after the Y2K scare and the booming rise of the dot-com era, director Mira Nair invites her viewers to a traditional arranged Punjabi wedding with the, th with the threat of the monsoon season on the horizon. So in Monsoon Wedding, we are introduced to Lalit Verma, played by Nezaruddin Shah, and his wife Pimmy, played by P Lilette Dubey. They are up to their elbows as they prepare for the wedding of their eldest daughter, Aditi, played by Vasundara Das, to an Indian-American computer specialist named Hemant Ra played by Parvin Dabas. And of course, this, of course, you know, when it came to a traditional Punjabi wedding, you don't have, there is no 
small little wedding. There is no subtlety. In weddings of this caliber, in this trajectory, you're not going to have 20 guests. You're not going to have 60 guests. Hell, you're not even going to have 100 guests. You usually end up having guests range between 500 to maybe even close to 1,000. Yes. In a lot of traditional Punjabi weddings, they weddings in Punjabi tradition is colossal. It's macro. You're going to have thousands of guests. Maybe even friends, relatives, family that you've never heard of before. From his family, their family... It's a big, giant, grandeur party. Of course, you know, they go through the other testimonials too before they really start to get it off. And also the preparations. A lot of the movies is set around the preparations to this big wedding. Lalit Verma is up to his elbows. He is the father of the bride. Now, a lot of people sometimes think that the bride is the most important character in the movie. Oh, yes. So you don't worry. No question about it. She is very important. I mean, and she's also going through the motions, too. I mean, you know, she is uh, like a modern day type of career oriented lady. Who, of course, has aspirations of working in the TV industry. Um, she, prior to her arranged wedding, she has also kind of, I guess, kind of broke a little bit of protocols by being a little bit dishonest to her husband who has been selected to her to marry. Well, she has also got at an affair with a TV host. Whom she produces. So, you know, there's a bit of that problem. Of course, you know, it's kind of like a bit of some culture clash here between marriage through love over the traditional arranged marriages. That also comes into a lot of deep scrutiny that is undertaken. I mean, it's, it's, it's explained in a very, very simple fashion. Although, you know, with all the chaos that's surrounding this whole big family, there's a lot going for it. In, in this two-hour movie, there's like a myriad of subplots. And everybody all has kind of what you would call a piece of the pie. And yes, Aditi is... Feeling the pressures and the stresses of getting married. And maybe even the doubts. Which is actually kind of normal. When a person does tie the knot. Sometimes uh, they, they always ask this very important question. Am I making the right decision? Or will I soon make a decision that I will somewhat regret? I know that that sounds very cynical in my analogy. But, you know, that's just perfectly normal. You know, when you're... I mean, it, and it doesn't just speak out from a Punjabi wedding standpoint, but I think it's pretty universal that everyone has this kind of frame of mind. Like, when you're up there, am I making the decision to marry this person or that person? Did I make the right decision? Or will it be a decision that I will unfortunately regret? I'm not saying it happens to everyone. I mean, some people make the right decisions. But then there's also scenarios where a lot of people end up regretting. And then it lies a bit of a big dent in the reputation of not just the bride, but the groom. She's probably feeling that kind of way too. Perfectly normal, perfectly understandable. 
and also because of the fact that she kind of broke a bit of a traditional Punjabi protocol or arranged marriage protocol by by getting involved in a um getting involved in a relationship with the host and she has to to be brave to actually confess that she has her her wedding to this he meant right, and that the fact that she probably is going to have to, they, they, she has her plans to marry this guy. Okay, she actually met the guy about a couple of weeks before the marriage. But you, you do feel bad, you do take sympathy for her. You see, the thing about this movie is that you probably will take a lot of sympathy for a lot of characters. Um, yeah, but eventually she does step up the bravery to confront this person who she fell in love with to actually confess. Of course, naturally, he's upset about it, but eventually puts it behind him inevitably and everything just kind of works out he starts to understand her, what she's going through i mean this is one of the things i like about this movie is that everything just feels natural and through all the chaos and the situations with all these people and all these characters who just want to have their center of attention Everything just seems, to, all the characters just seem to be organically natural in their emotions. I mean, it sometimes makes you hard to believe that these are actual actors. When I was watching this movie, I actually thought I was seeing first hands of a real, authentic, Punjabi arranged marriage. Every character, and through all the trials and tribulations, whenever a character reveals themselves, it's handled in a mature situation. You feel bad for also Lilith because of the fact that he's up to his elbows in debt. I mean, for a marriage of this caliber to take place, it doesn't go cheap. In fact, it's quite expensive. And because of the fact that he's a perfectionist, he wants to do everything he can for his daughter so that she can have a successful marriage before the monsoon season kicks in. He wants everything to be perfect. And even if it sometimes comes to a point where he may not always be that... Uh, that empathetic to the people who are surrounding him, whether it be the workers, whether it be the wedding planners, or whether it be sometimes even his own family. I mean, he has a son that's coming in all the way from Melbourne, Australia, who he somehow always seems to label him as the idiot. I mean, it's like, why are you always calling this guy an idiot? Or sometimes when it comes to the bumbling idiocy of his, of his co-workers, or his wedding planners. You know, he's, he's always, I mean, he, he, he seems, he, I mean, I, I can understand the pressures he's going through. And, of course, in this movie, you see a lot of, like, class clash systems going, you know, we could clearly tell which characters are rich and which ones are poor. Obviously, Lilith is not very rich. 
I mean, maybe he's okay to some levels of financially, but when it comes to a big wedding of this caliber, he sometimes is begging and asking people, this particularly the rich relatives, to help him out any way they can. And so, you know, you do feel for this guy. I mean, there's also him badgering his son because his son doesn't have a direct career path. His son just simply wants to just dance. Nothing more, nothing less. Sometimes he feels that his son is somewhat effeminate. And even though today we could we can, you know, fully accept the kid for what he is. But, of course, this is kind of back in 2001. I mean, I don't think he wants to intend to sound homophobic. But it just sometimes just comes out that way. Or maybe he just thinks that this boy wants to pursue a career in dancing will not make him rich or successful. And that he should try making making a career out of something that pays well, like a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. But I at least still say one thing. I mean, some characters, of course, are going to be more developed than others. But when you think about this, this is an ensemble movie. So we have guests that span the globe, hundreds of them. The main characters are all unique with diverse characteristics and it makes everything feel more natural. Almost as if the film was in fiction, but just like a real family. An extended family. Everything just seems so organically natural. It's just something that'll really truly get you on your chair. On your chair. It you will be truly invested into the characters, pretty much. I mean, there's definitely more stuff to it, but I'll go through some of the other subplots as we go along. What made Monsoon Wedding successful was that Nair created exactly what she wanted, and in the end, we got more than what she bargained for. She wanted to exhibit the goings-on at a traditional Punjabi wedding, that had relatable characters, which they were, and when they handled even the more difficult situations, it was also handled in such a mature, realistic way, and didn't go over the top in its conflicts. Sure, they tackled the funny stuff, and there was a lot of funny stuff, relatable, funny stuff, that doesn't go off the deep end of being goofy, or silly, or anything like that. And then, of course, it also tackled serious issues. And yes, there are some serious issues that came about in this movie. Not the movie in particular, but there are some subplots that are serious. One of them is also very, very extremely dark, which I will also gravitate to a bit. But it's also something that many people have experienced in their lifetime. But the real credit for the success of this movie comes from the script written by Columbia University student Sabrina Dewan, who of course has a Master of Fine Arts from there. And I think she did a great job. I mean, Mira Nair is famous for directing a lot of Great movies, television series, but it's her documentaries that have gone her most noticed. And Monsoon Wedding makes you believe that this is an actual, real, legit thing, and the events that happen at a at a wedding of this caliber. You gotta take her words for it. I don't think there's any kind of hypocrisy. Or anything that could be labeled as superficial. So with her background on documentaries. Mira Nair 
combines this movie to her 1988 Oscar-nominated film, Salam Bombay, while capturing the big screen atmosphere to the Denzel Washington starring vehicle, Mississippi Masala. There are a lot of issues involving the socioeconomics that's the driving force in this narrative in Monsoon Wedding, like Lolit trying his hard, his best to make the perfect wedding, but also is struggling with the finances. We see rich characters, we see poor characters, we see who he's depending on and who he's and who he's putting down. We see that within both its characters and the myriad of subplots add it to the synopsis to the story, you know. There are some light stuff, there are some dark stu stuff. There's one that's really dark, which I will get to. The cinematography of her Kama Sutra collaborator, Declan Quinn, he captures the colors, the beauty, and the atmosphere of the festivities located in the heart of New Delhi, India, with an ensemble of 68 talented performers with five provocative subplots that connect to the main story as each scene can be filled with laughter, tears, drama, music, and culture. There are some very heartfelt moments that will make you laugh. There are some serious moments that will put you to tears. But all in all, you see the beauty and you see just how perfect this movie pans out. Even though the situations of the characters are anything but perfect, they are still relatable. And you just, and you know, a lot of these characters, you just want to go out there and give at least one of them a hug. Because they're very, very sympathetic, most of them. The symbolic flowers used for this movie are the marigolds. I mean, the marigolds are the most beautiful flowers there. And also, just to let you know something, they're actually edible too. You can eat them and you won't get poisoned. They really captivate the essence of the subplots in this movie. Especially those of the cynical wedding planner, Vijay Raz's character, P.K. Dubey. Who has the most interesting subplot in this movie as he is esoterically attracted to the housekeeper, Alice, played by Tilotama Shomi. I know deep down inside, he wants to be an integral part of her life, even though being a Punjabi himself will probably not get that opportunity because of traditional protocols. Alice could probably feel the same way too. But there is really no stopping who a person should fall in love with. But eventually, he and Alice would eventually marry under the marigold umbrella in the monsoon rain. Maybe they may not have as big of a grandeur wedding as Aditi and he met, but but they love each other, and that's really all that matters. Maybe they may not have the money, but they definitely have the love and the happiness for each other. And if that should make them happy, then we should all be happy about what they've about about them. Nair could have easily kept this film into a one-plot-only narrative, but with the hundreds of guests attending and everybody's involved in everyone's life, 
there is likely a lot more drama that seems to intertwine with the wedding ceremony as a lot of characters hold secrets that get unraveled throughout the events leading to the big wedding, like like Aditi and her affair with her her talk show host who she produces. But there's also a very, very interesting one where I believe, and I'm not sure if this is her sister or a cousin, I believe she's supposed to be kind of like a maid of honor type of, of role. Anyhow, when they're introduced to a character named Tesh, played by Raj Kapoor, We could see a lot of unsettling moments arrive when he makes his a presence known. Now, at first you think, hey, this guy's rich. He seems to be very prominent. And he seems to somewhat will help Lali in many ways with his finances. And it seems like he seems to have a good standing with most of the family members here. But the problem is, as much as he might be rich and charismatic and charming and seems like a down-to-earth cool guy, we start to realize that there's something really dark and sinister about him. The cousin, or is it her sister? I'm not sure. I don't remember in particular but she did mention that when she was young he sexually harassed he sexually molested her and every time she makes eye contact with him you see a lot of civil unrest within her there's a important scene that comes in when he takes off with a little girl who now this Tesh guy, I believe he's like a rich uncle. Anyhow, he takes off with a little girl to who knows where. She stops the car from going any further. I mean, she tries to tell people that this guy, this Tesh, Uncle Tesh, well, that he's a perverted creep and that he's a sexual predator, but nobody would believe, believe her. And then we come to a climax where on the day of the wedding, they're all wearing their traditional garments. And Lalit tells Tesh that... That he doesn't want him to be part of this wedding. He doesn't want him to be anywhere near them anymore. And tells them that they should leave. So he and his wife take off. I like the way how Lalit handled the situation. I mean, it wasn't handled in an over-the-top aggressive way. There was no violence. There was no fist fight. It was very civil. There was no real like over the top screaming or yelling. Or any other like climactic battles or anything like that. He just told them off. I don't want you here. And I expect you to leave soon. That's basically what he did. I just like the way he handled the situation. It was perfect. Every character who goes through some startling revelations handles it in a professional, somewhat mature perspective. Almost every leading character in Monsoon Wedding has some startling revelation. Even the bride herself bears some heavy baggage like I mentioned before. Aditi just can't get over the fact that she doesn't have the heart to end her affair 
with someone she truly loves due to you know a family tradition of marrying someone they arranged for her with the likable groom he meant as the big day is drawing closer she visits him one more time in hopes that he met understands what the circumstances are and you know he even tells him even tells her that you know marriage is a challenge and just like life itself is a challenge and that we all take risks and whether it turns out to be success or a failure at least the effort was put in I couldn't have said that better myself. The darker themed st subplots stem that involves Pimmy secretly offering cigarettes to her cousin Rhea, played by Shafali Shah, as she unravelings unravels an unsettling incident that happened to her many years ago. Even though the dark reigns of this movie, Nayir and company. They manage to handle these situations professionally as we walk into a musical henna, which is like a calm before the storm that leads to this devastating, haunting revelation. So in spite of the drama, the humor, and the seriousness that comes within the story, Monsoon Wedding is very much focused on the cultures. It is still a celebration and the embracing of Indian culture, of Punjabi customs and traditions, and it shows that they are a proud people of who they are and share just the same dramas and conflicts as every human living on this earth. The pressures of weddings is demonstrated. It's not just from a Punjabi standpoint, but from a universal the balance of old school traditions like the arranged marriages and the modern settings of how some of these more younger, more modernized individuals, they, the culture clash, the systems clash, the class clash between the rich and the poor, they all manage to stay fresh and never does it feel archaic in its details. One is not saying the other one is better than the other, and so on and so forth. But once everything comes into place, everything just seems to be all right. And that is what we hope for. I mean, it might be just rational thinking on my part, but you do have to feel for these characters of what they're going through. And we hope... That everything turns out for them in the end. In spite of the good characters and the bad ones, there are someone that we could all relate to. Inviting us into your home and making you a part of it are the intentions that Nir wanted from us. And after watching Monsoon Wedding, she hopes that we are enlightened, educated, and inspired by what has transpired in this movie while still being entertained by the engaging subplots. The human spirit comes alive and full force with themes and secrets that will open up. It's just a matter of time. This movie truly brings that, and I really highly recommend you guys to see this movie. If I was given this movie a scale out of 10, I would give Monsoon Wedding... A 9 out of 10. So this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please feel free to do so. If you wish to leave a comment, go right ahead. But just remember the three simple rules. Be kind, be courteous, and please refrain from any rude comments. And I will be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Corrupt Writer saying, keep watching those movies, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.